Uh, Dave, you took us from 1995 into the 21st century. Tell us what happened. Okay. Well, first of all, the good thing about going last, I can hear what everybody else said. <laughs> uh, and, uh, first of all, Mr. Cuba's too hard on himself. He did a lot in the year that he was there. And uh, quite frankly, I don't think in all the years I've been in public service, I've never, ever met anybody with a bigger heart for the mm -hmm. city of Shelbyville than Don Cuba. And uh, we, are, we are so fortunate to have somebody like him that uh, I can honestly say every decision he ever made, he made it because he thought it was the right decision to make. It was never at any time what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could use more people like that, quite frankly, in, uh, in government service. Uh, just a couple stories for, for Neil didn't tell you the whole story. Uh, <laughs> but in uh, 1986 is when we go that occupational tax in. And what he didn't tell you is I came on January of 96, as did Bobby Hudson and Norris Beckley. Half the council was brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's like anything else you learn when you first come on. It's, it's easy to run for something uh, that when you get in there, you find out it's a little bit different world than what you thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be on the council for uh, two and a half months and the first thing the mayor's going is wanting you to vote for a tax increase is not a good position. <laughs> <laughs> So that, and then, better be in the much for the election. <laughs> yeah. and, and we actually voted for that tax increase, uh, just in case people have forgotten. We didn't have City Hall at that time. Uh, we voted for it. It was in the basement of the library. We, we were meeting in the basement of the library at that time was where we did that. So uh, The other thing, this, this is true, is uh, when Neil Hackworth uh, was, became the mayor of Shelbyville, he lived on Cherokee. And uh, when I took over from Neil, I lived on Cherokee. <laughs> and when Tom Harsey took over from me, he lives on Cherokee. <laughs> uh, so okay, since... get that. <laughs> it's always plowed. It's yeah. always plowed. <laughs> 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 okay. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> since, uh, since 1982, <laughs> with the exception of the one year that Don was in there, the mayor has lived on Cherokee. <laughs> And I was going to say just the opposite. That's the reason it didn't get plowed. Uh, because, uh, believe it or not, no matter how, how much snow we get, and, and this includes the night we woke up with 23 inches on the ground, we, were, we had calls at 6 o'clock in the morning, why is my street not clean? Uh, but uh, honestly, when people would call me about why is the street not clean, my pat answer was, ma'am, my street's not clean either. That's fine. And so as long as you can give that answer, you were okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but that is, that is true that since 1982, the mayor of Shelbyville is on Cherokee. So, uh, mm -hmm. and Mayor Harsh has been there what now? Uh, he's two, one of his, two, his, his third term. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to approach this from a little different standpoint because I, I don't really feel like I did anything, to be real honest with you. I was a part of something that... Uh, I was proud to be a part of it. Sometimes it was in a uh, role as a council member, sometimes in a role as mayor. But uh, from the time Marshall was mayor till basically when my term was finished, it was a very unique period in, in Shelbyville's history that I think a lot of people have forgotten. And uh, because there was a continuity from the people that were involved in the city government. I mean, like, you know, Marshall was mayor for eight years, but when Marshall left, he didn't leave government, he went to the state mm -hmm. as a representative and worked with us as a representative and did a lot of things for us. And uh, I said, I was on Neil's council, Don was on Neil's council, as was Lucy, uh, Tom Harsty was on Neil's council. And uh, e even after that, when Don took over, you know, I was on that council, it was Tom. Uh, when I was mayor, Tom was on my council, it was Don and, and Lucy and others. So th there was a period of time from basically when Marshall became mayor to 2002, there was this incredible continuity of government that you may never see again. And I, 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 think, I think that's one of the reasons why we accomplished so many things, uh, because we got along so well. I mean, we didn't always agree on every issue, but we got along well. And we had, we had a common vision. And when you had a, a common vision, even as leadership changes, and you've had that same common vision, <coughs> it tends to, to, to continue on. And so I look at it from the standpoint, uh, I can stand here tonight and tell you that uh, my name's the one on City Hall as I was the mayor of City Hall when it was built. But the reality is, it started with the Shelbyville 2000 plan. Uh, Neil Hackworth was actually the mayor when we uh, did the RFPs to find the architect. 
Don was the mayor when we actually hired the uh, the people that the Brandstar and Carroll to do the construction, and I was the mayor when it was all done. I, I just happened to be the one who got my name on the bill. <laughs> okay, but the reality is, it was it was all of us uh, that, that did this, and I can go through almost everything that. Uh, that I've been involved with in some shape, form, or fashion, and, and I can tie almost every one of us into it at some point in time. Uh, and it's, it's a very unique thing. Uh, you know, Don mentioned streetscape. Again, uh, we were streetscape because it started off with the Shelby 2000 plan. We became a Renaissance Gold City, but I happened to be the mayor when we, we started the project. So I got to be the one in the hard hat with this picture being taken. Yet if it had been for these others, it would have never have happened. Um, you mentioned the Family Activity Center. Again, I was the mayor uh, when that happened. We were arguing for years, you know, we, we need this Family Activity Center, but nobody was stepping up to the plate. And finally, uh, as mayor, uh, my council agreed to put the first half million dollars toward that project. But again, that wouldn't have happened I mean, I mean, Marshall, he didn't tell you, sort of, he, he tells me all the time, he was the second person ever to jump into the swimming pool. <laughs> what year was that? That was 1950. <laughs> uh, well, no, it was in 1948, yeah. I think. Oh. The only one he had was uh, yeah. ran, ran in parks during the summer. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Long wouldn't let you, let you go first, he had to go first? No, Jimmy Mac Ratcliffe tried okay. to get in. <laughs> 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 he ended up the like yeah. 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 So you got, you got Marshall that was the first one in the pool in 1940-whatever. Uh, you know, and and Neil, Neil was involved, like you said, with the pool, and we got that bubble on top of that. And basically what happened when that bubble was put up is we established a high school swimming team. And when that high school swimming team was established, that led to the, that led to the Family Activity Center at some point in time. And if you want to know where the bubble is, it's buried underneath the ice rink now. Uh, skate park. Skate park, thanks. Skate park, okay. I that thing might be an ice rink, but that's, that's where it's at. We talked about an ice rink. <laughs> we talked about it. Uh, so again, I can go over and over and over things that have happened that had it not been for others and their leadership and laying the groundwork and getting things done, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to, to, to be a part of what I, I was a part of. And, and uh, I hope that continues to be Mr. Hardesty through some things. 